Welcome to Faith with Flavor, the place to be to season and encourage your faith. I'm your host, Donna Clayton. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 16, 24, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. There is a price we must pay to do the will of God that not many are willing to pay, but then there are those that do. What would you do if God told you to leave the comfort of your own home, your land, your friends and family to go to a land where he would show you? Well, that's exactly what happened to Jake and Priscilla Sellers. God called them to the city of Tijuana in Mexico, and they left life as they knew it behind. Today, they will share their journey with us and what God has done so far. But first, take a look at another ministry that is making a difference in their community. Light Records Media partnered with Healing Hope for Humanity to feed the homeless. Watch this. All right, so we're out here in San Bernardino and we're getting ready to feed the homeless. Light Records is partnering up with Healing Hope for Humanity. So we're getting the signs put up out here. And even when reaching I'm the city of San Bernardino. So stay tuned yeah. and thank everyone for your contribution. I'm here with Michael James and Healing Hope for Humanity, as well as LRCMG, and together we've uh, put on an event that is reaching out to the community. As you just saw, we were out there reaching the, the city of San Bernardino and uh, all the homeless people that are being ministered to, and now they're being uh, fed, and we have clothes. Tell me a little bit about the event that's going on here. Um, so today we're just trying to reach as many people as we can to um, feed. There's a lot of people going without um, proper nutrition throughout the year and especially today being Thanksgiving is a very big day so what we decided to do is feed as many people we can so we're going to be having people at the event that are going to eat and then after the event we're going to be um, boxing up plates and taking them around the community and dropping them off um, not just in San Bernardino but also in Riverside just again trying to um, reach as many stomachs as we can. Yes that's awesome and you know this is a, a great way to show you know God's love and um, especially doing this on Thanksgiving morning. What's your name? My name is uh, Rick Lopez. And um, how do you feel that this event helped you today? Oh, as soon as I stepped in line, you know, I could already feel the love. There was just something different, you know what I'm saying? And, and I believe that's the love of, you know, Thanksgiving, giving and, you know, that, that spirit. And um, I felt that from the start and I just, it continued to grow as I passed in the lines, getting some food, you know, people just talking to me, really made me feel welcome. Awesome. I appreciate it, you yeah. know. For sure. All the love, man. Yeah. All right. God bless you. And you're from San Bernardino? Yes, sir. Awesome. All right. God bless you, bro. Me and my wife spent our Thanksgiving morning out here in San Bernardino, feeding the uh, the need and um, also clothing them. Like you guys have seen, you know, people are receiving clothes. But, you know, it's really a blessing to have a wife that is very understanding and in this 100% with me. How do you feel about this event? Uh, I actually think it's turning out really well. It, I'll be really honest with you, it was really hard getting up this morning at 5 a.m., but I wouldn't have changed it, wouldn't have done it any differently. Being here now and seeing everything and going out and actually reaching the people, it's really a big blessing, and I couldn't be happier at the turnout. It are definitely touching a lot of lives today. So right now we're uh, packing, repackaging the meals that we still have a lot of food. A lot of people came through that could make it here, but we're going to actually reach the outer part of the city uh, that couldn't make it. We you know walking distance, so we're pre-packaging these meals with waters, food, and we're going to go out there and uh, reach the people directly. You know that that won't be able to walk to us. Showing me that true love When it seems like no one else yeah, in my life does yeah, You always show up on time yeah, like this beat 
take a listen. Take a listen. Take a listen. You, 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 you are my strength whenever I am falling down. I stay true to your work, got my feet on solid ground. Into my life where no one else seems to be around. That's why I'm praising you so much with my sound. Encouraging everyone that is a God who truly cares. All you gotta do is ask him and he'll be right there. Trust me, you are always on his mind. Once he's with you, he'll never leave you. That's why. God, you are my choice. You are, you are. You are. I'm here with Geneva, founder of Healing Hope for Humanity. Hi. And we just wanted to thank you for thank your support, you. all the contributions. Yes. So God bless everybody and this was a very successful event. Everyone left touched. They felt the love of God and they were blessed on their Thanksgiving where they would have been just living in the street. So this was a blessing. Yes, thank you. God bless. God bless. If you just started tuning into the show, that was a look at the good work that Healing Hope for Humanity is doing in the streets of San Bernardino. And now let's meet Jake and Priscilla Sellers. Hi, Jake. Hey, how Welcome you doing, Welcome to Donna? Face of Flavor. Hi, Hi Priscilla. Thank you so much for being my guest on the show. It's an honor. I'm honored oh, to have you guys. Yeah. You know, you guys are doing an amazing work in TJ. And, but first and foremost, I want to know, how did you guys come to know the Lord? You look like you have a very deep testimony there, brother. <laughs> I don't, it's just, yeah, normal life. No. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty radical. Um, so growing up, I had never been to church. I never knew God. I never prayed. Um, I did have a praying grandmother, but um, nobody ever taught me the gospel. Never, no one ever taught me about Jesus whatsoever. Never was baptized um, in and out of prison my entire life. First for two years, and then for five years, then for three years. So after 10 years total, um, I got out and went right back to selling drugs and doing everything wrong, and got arrested for selling a large quantity of drugs out in uh, Nevada. I'm originally from Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. And so that was a life sentence. Mm. Right, and um, then they filed what's called the Habitual Criminal Act on me which is another life sentence. Then they filed what's called the RICO Act on me, which is another life sentence. So I was getting three life sentences. I had the best lawyer in town, and he said, no deals. They want you off the streets forever. Wow. Um, so they put me in a new super maximum security unit pending the outcome of my trial for the worst of the worst. And once a week, someone was hanging themselves back there. And for the first time in my life, I, I became suicidal. The spirit of suicide just consumed me. And after battling with that for a while, I, I broke down and I ripped up my sheet and uh, I made a noose and I went to hang myself. And right before I did, I fell to my knees and for the first time in my life, I prayed. Mm -hmm. And my exact prayer was, Lord, please save my life. Get me out of this cell. Put me back around other people, never to see this cell again. And I ended my prayer with this, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, amen. Wow. Now, being someone that wasn't raised in the church or anything like that, how did you know to say that prayer? Well, so I have seen pictures of Jesus hanging on people's walls or my grandmother having a cross over the door, stuff like that, but is actually a bookmark in juvenile that I read the phrase, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. <laughs> and so that was my only concept of maybe this is what I should say mm. uh, in regards to prayer. And so I remember God allowed me to remember that in His grace. I called out to Jesus Christ, like I just shared, and went to sleep with that noose at night, thinking to myself, well, if there is a God, I'm giving him 24 hours. If nothing happens, I'm going to kill myself. And I got called to court the very next morning, and I was sitting in the courtroom thinking about how my life was over. And my lawyer came running in and ran right up to me and he said, I don't know what happened, but you must be the luckiest man alive. They're willing to dismiss everything if you take this deal right now. Wow. And I hurried up and signed it and that deal was for 15 years. And um, I ended up doing five years on that 15 year sentence. But right after I signed for that deal, I went back to my cell and right before the guard shut the door, he said, by the way, gather all your things. You're being transferred to where everybody's at. So in less than 24 hours, my exact prayer to a T was answered wow, to where I couldn't say it's a coincidence. And when I got to that new unit and everybody was, hey, Jake, because it's a small world and we all know each other in there. And I said, no, who has a Bible? And mm -hmm. I started studying the Word of God every day since, studying it for <laughs> 10 to 14 hours a day in my cell for that five years. All I had was my Bible and Greek and Hebrew concordance. 
Wow. And, um, and God sent me to five different prisons. I started five different churches, brought a third of the prison population to Christ. I used to work in the laundry room and I'd clean out the big laundry tubs and fill them with water and wow. have guys keep lookout for the guards and sneak guys to the back and do <laughs> secret baptisms oh. and just watch the power of God really, really explode throughout the prison system. Wow, even there in prison, God was already calling you to pastor a church, wasn't he? Oh, already <laughs> called, yep. That's Amen. so awesome. And what yeah. about you, Priscilla? Tell me a little bit about your testimony. Well, mine's a little different. I've always known the Lord. I was born and raised in the church. My dad's a pastor in San Jose and um, never really got to experience God in a relationship, but always knew he was real, always understood who he was. And um, I veered away and um, I thought I could handle it on my own and everything was crumbling before me. Um, went through a divorce, had two small children, and finally hit like a rock bottom where I was like, Lord, you created me for more than this. Like, what is it that you want from me? And um, I had cried out to him and was in this journey of like figuring out who I was in the Lord. And um, I actually had made a prayer and um, the Lord heard heard in my, my heart and um, started showing up in, in little parts of my life. And um, I got the opportunity to um, just, just truly experience him and his love and his grace for the first time behind bars. And um, uh, we'll get a little bit more into that, but um, I got to experience God's love for once at Wait. 30, what, 32? I was mm -hmm. 32, 33? In prison. Through our relationship. Yeah, through how, when I met Jake. Okay, so how did you two meet? <laughs> so I was in prison. I had one year left. God had already given me visions and all kinds of things that he was going to do with my life. I was ecstatic about my future. Um, and a random guy asked me to write a random letter to a random girl. And this guy, this, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, this guy, I, I, I mean, he, he was up to no good. I tried to minister to him and witness to him many times. He didn't want anything to do with the Lord, um, and he just was doing everything wrong. And I thought to myself, uh, you know, I don't want to write anybody. He knows I don't want to have any <laughs> ties to this guy. He's trouble. <laughs> but the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, what if it's someone who's suicidal? What if it's someone who needs encouragement? And so I thought, fine. I wrote out just my testimony that I shared with you, mailed it out, and when she received it, when she received my letter, she threw it right in the trash. And she told her sister. Guilty. She told her sister, her sister was writing to that guy, and she told her sister, I'm not writing a guy in jail. I'm, I, my, my life is in shambles. I'm not, no way, that's, that's, that's madness. I had to figure myself out. Yeah, and her sister said, let's, let's just read it and see what it says, you know? And so she opened it up and began reading it and started crying because my testimony is exactly the same as her father's. When he was wow. 19 years old, he was about to get multiple life sentences, and he cried out to God, and he said, if you get me out of this, I'll serve you all the days of my life. <laughs> Next day, charges were dropped, and he's been a pastor now for 45 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did God tell you, like, okay, this is the man you're supposed to marry, this is the woman that you're supposed to marry? How did you know? So God showed me who she was and had me really speaking into that, speaking into existence the things that yet not exist because she was in her transition, but he showed me who she was. Mm -hmm. He showed me that she was a leader of women and that even though she was the youngest of six sisters, that she was gonna lead to older ones, to Christ, and he just revealed these things mm -hmm. to me. And so, and then one day he just really solidified in my heart that, you know, she's gonna be my, my wife. And so I just, I thought, man, I love you, Lord, and I'm going to step out in faith. And I, and I called her one day and I said, hey, listen, you're either going to run for the hills or run to my arms. The Lord <laughs> said, you're going to be my wife. And she was like, yeah. okay, yeah, let's see how that works out. And, uh, and then, yeah. and then and, we and met for the first you? time. And like, I mean, well, the, was, the, that's the a very unconventional way of meeting somebody, definitely, right? Definitely, <laughs> and it's not what I do. <laughs> um, it definitely was something I would have, had somebody told me this was going to happen, I would have just laughed, like, no way. <laughs> but um, when I read the letter, and I've always told them, something stirred up in my heart, and now I understood that was my spirit, like knowing that this was the man that God created for me. But um, the moment that I got to see him for the first time and I stepped foot in that prison 
and um, stood before him is just an overwhelming feeling that even the term of weak in the knees was so real. It was truly weak in the knees. And when he hugged me and embraced me, I got to experience just true God's love through him. Aww. And I knew that this was the man that was created for me. Those arms were the arms I was meant to be with. And mm. it was just overwhelming. And I just saw, I saw Jesus through his eyes and the truth. and. It just was, I knew that moment. I knew that he was the one. Mm. Yeah. So you get out after that year was over and then did you go right into ministry or how did God call you? Yeah, so the very first church I have ever been to in my entire life um, was about a mile away from where I paroled to. And I thought to myself, well, I have nothing so I can walk there if I need to. Mm -hmm. And I started going to that church and that was in April of 2015. By August of 2015, I was full-time staff, became the associate pastor for two years, and helped watch the church grow from 300 people to over 1,000, and, and just developed all these amazing relationships. And then God called me out of that to do what we're doing now out in Mexico. And so tell me how God started stirring up your heart for Mexico. Yeah, so we have, first of all, we have family out in Mexico. And through your wife? Through my yes. wife. She has, we have cousins out in Rosarito that we yeah. just, in and aunt, yeah, mm -hmm. and we just, we just love them. They mean the world to us. They're such good friends mm -hmm. and, and brothers and sisters in Christ. And we started preaching at some of the churches down there and getting connected ministry wise. And finally we met um, some deported people that were in hopeless situations. And they were people without a country, people without a home. They were ex not accepted by society out there. They had zero job opportunities. Um, they, they, they weren't from there. They just happened to be born there. And so all of a sudden they're deported and thrown in Mexico, total culture shock. And I remember one night, one of them was suicidal. He didn't have anywhere to go. And I gave him all the money I had in my pocket and he still went and killed himself. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, you know, I, there was, I, I didn't have enough money to change his circumstances, mm. but homes are so cheap out there, this and that, that you know what, if we moved out there and we started opening up safe houses, that could change somebody's yeah, circumstance. True impact. If, yeah, if we could put someone in a home and start discipling them and say, don't worry about rent, don't worry about food, don't worry about clothing, like we can do this. It's so cheap out there, pennies on the dollar, it's so cheap to make a huge impact like that, that mm that's really what started birthing in, in our hearts. In our hearts. And you are already making an impact. And we actually have a video, you guys, to show you about the impact that they are started tuning into the show that was a look at city reach tijuana and joining us today is jake and priscilla sellers who are joining up together to make things happen for those people down there welcome back to the show thank you thank so you. much for being here you know what you guys are doing is just so amazing i just love how you guys are really just discipling people right mm -hmm. that's right and leading them to jesus what do you think is the most effective part of your ministry jake the most effective part is 
the hands-on and, and just the love, just the unconditional love, believing in people, seeing what God sees for them and mm -hmm. just really bringing God's heart for the community to, and, to Tijuana, yeah. And Priscilla, you told me something, you know, off air about how God is just really calling you to full-time ministry and what that, what is that process looking like for you? So um, he really stirred it up in my heart. Um, I've been in my career for 12 years and um, have been successful at it and it's been a passion of mine. But for about the last year or so, he's been working in my heart and just showing me the talents and gifts that he's truly given me, but not for the sake of my career, but for the sake of his kingdom. And um, we just decided, um, I'm as of January, I'm giving up my own career and just letting in full faith, let God work in me and um, bring out everything I was created for. And um, it's, been, it's been a process. Um, but we're excited. I feel like God's going to do amazing things and um, is going to give me the opportunity to apply all those talents and in, in what He truly created me for. Amen. And that's like yeah. the perfect depiction of taking up our cross daily Amen. and following Him, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not easy, but it's, it's so worth it. It's so worth Definitely. it. Now, we love, you know, here at Salsa, we really love the Hispanic American community and all the different ethnic backgrounds that are a part of that. Amen. What would you say, though, are the core values of the Mexican people? Because, you know, you have so many different ethnic backgrounds within the Hispanic community. What have you noticed in TJ? Family. Family, Family is sure. the number one core value. I mean, even when somebody goes to prison out there, they're allowed to bring their family. Mm -hmm. Like, wow. family is where it's at. Um, so, yeah, I would say that's the main core value. I mean, they don't even have, you know, senior living out there because people take care of their elderly parents and aunts and uncles until they pass away. They don't care how hard it is. They don't, like, they, they don't send them off. They keep yeah. them with them, even dysfunctional or not, <laughs> regardless, good or bad. I mean, they're Which about is a family. beautiful uh, <clears throat> core to have because yeah. that's that's truly what the Lord entitles. We are a family in Christ, and um, it's gonna it's gonna be something that's gonna develop in, in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Amen. And where do you see your ministry in the next five to ten years? Would you say? Uh, I mean, completely worldwide. I mean, I just feel God has placed big dreams in our heart, and I can see it going to every ghetto in in the world and just exploding. Um, I, I think there's a special niche in, in what City Reach does, and that is they don't just, we don't just church plant, but we open up recovery homes and safe houses and partner them with the church, with specific churches. And those churches are then responsible for loving and discipling those people who are being recovered and rescued. Mm. And we've also, for Mexico, and we know this is gonna go worldwide, um, come up with sustainable living through fish farms and, and greenhouses that are created literally out of junk and they feed an entire village. And so we're just excited to see God's plan really expand. And, and through the sustainable living, it allows us into indigenous places that normally wouldn't allow the gospel, but they want food. And yeah. so they let us in. And then through that, we're able to bring the gospel and minister to them while we're working side by side. So I love it. Priscilla, I want you to look into the camera for me. And maybe there's a woman watching that is in your same boat and is God is calling her out of her full-time job into ministry or maybe something related to, you know, the work of the Lord. Would you just speak to her right now? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say God, this morning, God put in my heart um, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and it's faith, hope, and love, and love conquers all. So I would just say, experience God's love and um, truly embrace it, live it, share it, experience it, and the Lord will do His work. Um, trust and walk in full faith, and He, he, he will show you and He'll never fa fail you, and um, just, just keep moving forward. Amen. And Jake, we have a lot of people that are in prison that watch this program, and maybe they're in a helpless situation like you once were and they just need that encouragement to make it through another day. Would you just look into that camera and encourage them right now? Yeah, so if you're watching and you are contemplating thoughts of hopelessness, thoughts of so suicide, whatever your situation is, there is hope. God can bring hope. He can, 
He can free you from wherever you are. He can free you from bondage, from anything you're going through. And so I just want to encourage you to call on the name of the Lord and begin making an impact right where you are. Amen. The only limit God has is the one you place upon him. So just take the limits off, dream big with the Lord, and just let him do his thing in your life. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for being on the show. Thank you. And thank you at home for watching Faith with Flavor. I just want to leave you with this little nugget right here from the Word of God. It says in Luke 14, 27, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. We must take up our cross daily and follow Jesus to the ends of the earth. So wherever you are in your faith, I just want to encourage you to keep going, keep pressing on because the best is yet to come and God will always be with you every step of the way. If you have been blessed by this program, I would love to know your thoughts. Please go to lifewithdonna.com and email me your thoughts. I would love to stay connected with you. You can also subscribe to my email list. Thank you so much for watching Faith with Flavor. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>